Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the 7th module of our hands-on machine learning course. And this 7th module is all about building machine learning models from scratch. In my previous video, I have explained you what is the intuition behind a k-nearest neighbor model. And in today's video, we will be discussing what is the math behind a k-nearest neighbor classifier. So let's get started. And before going into the math part, I would like to give you a quick recap on what are all the things that we have discussed in the previous video. So we know that a k-nearest neighbor model is a supervised machine learning model where we use only labeled data set. And this knn can be used for both classification as well as regression problem where in classification, we will try to predict the category of a data point. Whereas in the case of regression, we will try to predict some numerical continuous value. So that is the difference between them and k-nearest neighbors can be used for both these cases and uh, the interesting aspect of k nearest neighbor is that it can be used for both linear data as well as non-linear data whereas if you think about models like linear regression and logistic regression we can use those models only with linear data so linear data means the features in the data set as a linear relationship between them so you can think about this linear relationship as direct proportionality or indirect proportionality say for example uh, let's say that we have two features so the value of one feature increases if the value of one feature uh, you know increases as well as it goes the same if the value decreases so the one feature will decrease if the other feature decreases so this is called as the linear relationship data so models like logistic and linear regression can work well only on this linear data whereas k nearest neighbor can also be used with non-linear data set and the important uh, thing about k nearest neighbor is that we have to uh, define some k value for it so these are all the things that we have discussed in the previous video so if you want a detailed explanation you should probably watch that video as well so i'll give the link for the intuition video in this video description and uh, in that video we, we took a example for a classification problem where we took loan amount in the x-axis and uh, annual income in the y-axis and these are all the data points that we have so we basically try to find whether a person is going to repay the loan on time or not so see here you can see here we have plotted these uh, data points uh, with loan amount as x-axis and annual income in the y-axis and all the green color data points represents the people who didn't repay the loan on time whereas blue color data point represents the people who repaid the loan on time now uh, we need to assign some k value for our model so let's say that the k value is 5 so what happens is like if you give a new data point so in this case the new data point is this red color circle so now the model will try to find 5 nearest data point to this new data point so because the k value is 5 if we assign the k value as 7 the model will try to find seven nearest data points to this uh, red color circle okay so if you see here i have just drawn a boundary rough boundary out here and you can see here within this boundary three data points represents green color and two uh, data points represents blue color which basically means the number of people who didn't repay the loan on time is kind of more uh, compared to people who have repaid the loan on time okay so we can say that this red color data points belongs to this green colored category where people tend to not repay the loan on time so we can say that uh, the red color data points represents people who may who may not repay the loan on time so how you can understand this is like uh, let's say that a bank want to uh, predict whether a person who is uh, asking them loan is going to repay the loan on time so they want to predict that predict it and in this case we can use a k nearest neighbor where we, we will try to find the nearest neighbor for that data point so this is how knn works it will basically try to find the nearest neighbor to the new data point and uh, it won't draw a boundary like this so this is just for a visual understanding so what it will do is it will try to find the distance between the new data point so new data point is nothing but the red color data point so this data point and the other data points so it will try to find the distance between them and it will choose five points that are very close to this red colored circle okay so and the distance measures that we will be using are euclidean distance and manhattan distance so these are the main aspects of k nearest neighbors so the main job is to find this distance and we will mainly use euclidean distance and in some cases we use manhattan distance so in the end of the video like, i'll tell you where you can use this manhattan distance okay so the main job here is to assign the k value and find this euclidean distance now let's let's take an example and see how we can find the distance between uh, two data points okay so let's see how we can find this euclidean distance so we are having x-axis and y-axis here and there are two data points let's say that the coordinate for this first data point is x1 comma y1 so let's name this data point as a and its coordinate is x1 comma y1 where x1 represents my uh, x-axis coordinate and y1 represents my y-axis coordinate and uh, the second point represents C and the coordinates are X2 and Y2, okay? And we want to find 
what is the distance between them and let's name this distance as d okay so this is just similar to the example that we have seen so as you can see here let's say that this is the first data point that we have so the model will try to find the distance between the red color data point and this green color data point so once it finds this distant distance it will try to find uh, the distance for the second data point so this process will be carried out until it finds five nearest data point to this red colored circle okay so let's see how this works so in order to find this distance what we can do is just draw two dotted lines so dotted lines from a and a dotted line from c so there is a point here right so there is a point and let's name this point as b and uh, this point b has the same uh, y coordinate as a and the same x coordinate as c so if you just think about this so this is my b point and this is my a point right so this is a straight line so there is a straight line between them and if you just join the straight line here you get the same uh, y value so a and b will have the same y value and if you see the point c and b they lie on the same line so you can just try to draw a straight line and join this x-axis value and you know that b and c has the same x-axis value which is x2 so you can think about the point b as a point which has the same y value as a and the same x value as c so we will get the coordinate as x2 comma y1 so now you can see that we have a right angle triangle right so in order to find this distance d you can just apply a simple pythagoras theorem so we know that uh, according to pythagoras theorem if you have a right angle triangle the square of the hypotenuse side is equal to the sum of the square of other two sides so this d this uh, line d represents by hypotenuse side and my line bc represents the height of the triangle and ab represents the base of the triangle so if you if you want to find the distance or the length of this hypotenuse side so the square of this side is equal to the square of the base and the square of the height so that's what i have represented here so this uh, hypotenuse which is d is represented by ac so ac square is equal to ab square plus bc square so we all know this a simple pythagoras theorem and uh, i'm just taking so this is an ac square right so if i want to uh, find ac value i just need to take a square root of this term so ac will be uh, ab square plus bc square and we have to take a square root of it and uh, let's say that this is my origin so we know that origin means 0 comma 0 right so we need to find the distance of a b and b c so how you can find is like i want to find this distance a b now because the terms are a b and b c so this is my a b the base of the triangle and this is my b c which is the height of the triangle so if you want to find the distance a b you can take the distance of o b and you can separate o a from it okay so o b minus o a will give you your value of a b and that is nothing but your x2 minus x1 and if you want to find this distance uh, b c you just need to subtract o b from o c so this is very simple right so i'll just uh, do one thing i'll just uh, mark it here so let's say that this uh, distance represents my x1 sorry okay so this distance the point which 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 lies uh, straight to it this represents my x1 value okay so this is my x1 and this point so this point represents my x2 value so i'll just draw a line here so this is my x2 value so if i want to find this distance so if i want to find this distance a b so this is my a b distance right so if i want to find this a b distance so what i need to do is i have to subtract so this is my x2 so if i want to find this distance a b so I just need to so just tolerate with my bad handwriting. So let's say that this is AB. So if you want to find this AB, you need to subtract X1 from this X2. So that's what I have written here. So AB is represented by X2 minus X1. In the same way, you can find the distance of this uh, BC by subtracting Y2 minus Y1. So this is what we get. So let's we know that AC is nothing but D. So this D is my Euclidean distance. So Euclidean distance D is equal to x2 root of square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 uh, whole square so this euclidean distance is basically derived from the pythagoras theorem which is very very simple now uh, let's say that we have two other data points let's say that uh, a represents the data points and the coordinates are 1 comma 1 and the c represents 2 comma 2 and we want to find this euclidean distance so we know that the formula in order to find this euclidean distance is d is equal to x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square and uh, my x1 and y1 are this point right so 
So x1 will be 1 and y1 will also be 1 and x2 will be 2 and y2 will be 2. So you can also take different data points, different coordinate and try to find the Euclidean distance if you want. So this is my uh, point A with x1, y1 and this is my point B with x2, y2 which are 2, 2. And if you substitute uh, those values here, just plug in those values and you will get the d value as square root of 2. So root 2 is my Euclidean distance in this case. So this is how uh, k nearest neighbor basically works. So it will try to find that Euclidean distance between all of these points and it will try to choose five points which has minimum distance between them so if two data points has a minimum distance between them it basically tells us those two data points are similar so what this uh, you know distance tells us that is that this green color data point is similar to this red color data point again these three data points are similar to this data point and so on so this is how uh, we try to find the similarity between the data points by finding the distance between them you know uh, in a graphical plot and if we talk about Manhattan distance, it kind of also works in the same way, but the way we are going to find the difference is pretty different. So instead of uh, finding the straight line difference between them, so instead of finding the uh, you know length of the distance between them, we kind of take a different route. So this will be my d value. So like in, there is a you know a simple concept to understand Manhattan distance. So consider this x y. So this region as a city. And in this city, we want to go from point uh, A to point C. So this is my, uh, you know, let's say that my travel destination C. So I want to go from A to C. And you cannot take a straight line route because there can be buildings in between. So you have to take a route like this. So this distance D is called my Manhattan distance, which is not a straight line distance. Whereas if you consider Euclidean distance, it is just a straight line or distance between two points. And the formula in order to find this Manhattan distance is this. So D is equal to modulus of x1 minus x2 plus y1 minus y2. And we know this uh, that x1 and y1 are 1 comma 1 and x2 y2 are uh, 2 comma 2. So you don't need squares and you don't need to take square root between them. So you just need to find the difference between the corresponding x coordinate and the corresponding y coordinate. Take a modulus of them. So if you substitute the values, you will get the value as d is equal to 2. So we have this x1 minus x2, right? So x1 is 1 and x2 is 2. So you get 1 minus 2 plus 1 minus 2. So this represents my y1 minus y2. And you will get modulus of my minus 1 and modulus of uh, again minus one and we just need to add it so we are just taking the modulus in order to uh, you know ignore the negative sign so if you don't uh, take the modulus you will have negative distance which doesn't make any sense so that's why we are taking modulus of this so this is why we use Manhattan distance and there is a reason when you know like in particular cases we use Euclidean distance and in particular case we use Manhattan distance and uh, where we use Manhattan distance is that when we have i dimensionality in the data so we can just uh, read this statement so Manhattan distance is preferred over Euclidean distance when there is I dimensionality in the data. I dimensionality in the sense if your data have so many features in that case it is a better idea in order to go with Manhattan distance instead of uh, you know going with uh, Euclidean distance. So the difference between this Ma Euclidean and Manhattan distance is that so Euclidean distance can take uh, you know take a route like this so it can take a straight line like this whereas a Manhattan distance can go only two ways so it can go either uh, you know in this direction or it can go in this direction like you can just think about this like in the north direction or in the east direction but it cannot take a northeast direction if we talk about Manhattan distance but a Euclidean distance can take a northeast direction so this is the difference between them so you know uh, the specific things about Euclidean distance where it can take uh, a complex directions like northeast whereas Manhattan distance will take either this north or east direction and so on. So this is the main difference between them. And uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention you is that so we have this uh, D right. So what happens when you have another feature let's say that we have another uh, axis called as z axis and you have three coordinates now. So now this formula will become x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square plus z2 minus z1 whole square. So in that case you just uh, subtract the corresponding z coordinates and so on. So you can think about this z coordinates as a new feature that you have in a data set. So you take two data points and subtract the corresponding features and you will get this Euclidean distance and the final thing is that you need to find the five data points which are very close to this new data point so if it is k is equal to seven we need to find seven data points if k is equal to three we need to find three closest lying data points so this is how basically 
you know k nearest neighbor rules and this is the math behind it and in the upcoming videos we can discuss more about this k and n and after that we can move on to the hands on part where we will try to build this model from scratch so that's it from my side and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching